What do you think about cryptocurrency as a form of currency? Well, uh, I think the train's already left the station in terms of cryptocurrency. Uh, you may or may not know that I just joined the board of Ripple, and the reason why I chose to, to join that board, it's, in my opinion, one of the few cryptocurrency options out there that has a credible and legitimate use. So financial institutions use it to settle cross-border payments. As always with XRP, nobody cares until you're right, and then it's too late. What's up, guys? Kevin Cage here with another cryptocurrency update. We're going to be diving into the XRP price chart along with some rapid fire news, so stick around. I hope you did, in fact, enjoy that intro of Rosie Rios, who has been appointed to the board of directors for the company Ripple. She was, in fact, the 43rd treasurer of the United States, and her signature is also single handedly printed on billions of dollars that are in circulation today. So, just one of the many power players backing the company Ripple, she goes on to say in that video clip I just showed you, that XRP is, in fact, one of the few legitimate cryptocurrencies. Next up, wanted to highlight this. So James Rule XRP sharing this. I know I highlight Standard Chartered a lot, so just wanted to show you additional proof that they have invested into Ripple years ago. Investments at the bank include blockchain network Ripple, whose XRP token has a capitalization of $48 billion. Um, this is a while back, and of course today it's approximately $55 billion. And also BNY Mellon, pretty interesting. This is another RippleNet partner. Remember Matthew Mellon as well, who lost his millions and millions of dollars of XRP. And as you navigate the polysign.io, which will be absolutely massive for XRP, you can see Tim Keeney alongside the creator of the XRP ledger, Arthur Brito, and David Schwartz. And he's the founder of Polysign. But on the board and the CEO is Jack McDonald of UBS, which we saw that bank right below BNY Mellon. Tim Keeney is actually retired vice chairman of BNY Mellon, responsible for custodying or holding or securing one fourth of all global institutional assets. And you can imagine that this is trillions of dollars, just like State Street is another one that custodies custodies, what, $10 trillion plus? So BNY Mellon, roster is Fireblocks, whose platform allows financial institutions to issue, move, and store crypto. So keep an eye on Fireblocks. I think we're going to see a lot more of them in the future. Um, Citibank, UBS, you get the gist. So right there as well, based out of Switzerland, and then BNP Poriba out of France. Now, just like we're seeing ODL corridors in Korea, we're seeing some developments in Vietnam, we're seeing some developments in Singapore and Japan. And Ripple has been all of those places and actually has offices in almost every location. We can see Gold Telegraph putting this out as well with Brazil. Now, Ripple met with the Central Bank of Brazil last year. This is all public knowledge at this point. And right here, one of the BRICS nations, Brazil's Central Bank purchased over 62 tons of gold in three months through July 2021, raising the nation's reserves to nearly 130 tons. So this country alone has almost doubled its gold reserves in three months. What do they know that we do not? We have Uphold and other exchange links are in the video description if you'd like to buy some XRP. We can see them asking Twitter, do you think XRP will hit double digits this year? Next up, guys, we have the value of $1 million from 1970 to 2021. So just over 50 years showing you examples of inflation, the weakening of your purchasing power each and every day, and why it's so important to have assets that provide cash flow, but also are a hedge against inflation. So the value of $1 million back in 1970, having a $1 million back then was equivalent to having about $7 million today. You can see the cumulative price change. You can see the average inflation rate since then, just under 4%, which is ridiculous. And yet people at a 9 to 5 are getting a 3% raise or maybe a 5% raise. In reality, it's not much of a difference. And for me personally, $1 million is not a goal. I think the biggest priority is cash flow. Cash flow is king. Let me make a quick example with API3 staking. However, I guess we could also apply this with Flare Network since they'll be live shortly. So for example, let's say I have $50,000 in API3, one of my favorite Oracle digital assets. I'm staking that currently, and on a weekly basis, I get staking rewards. And on an annual basis, the APY is over 50%, but it auto compounds each week. So for me, instead of just having a million dollars, that's sitting in fiat and a bank account that potentially is probably going to have negative interest rates. So I'm going to be paying an arm and a leg or even 1% to the bank for holding my money. I'd rather at least put some of that money to work for me. So it's earning a return and getting stronger. So I'm going to create a nest egg or a drip from the faucet to provide me cash flow off of that principal amount. 
Let's say that you're staking API 3 or you're running a DAG node or you're taking advantage of several of the options you have using your Spark token or your FXRP on Flare networks and you're earning maybe a few hundred dollars a month, maybe five grand a month, maybe fifty thousand dollars a month. And what I'd be doing with that cash flow is each and every month you're getting that certain amount, but it's going up a little bit more. I'm taking some of that amount and putting it right back into the machine. Why do I do that? Well, you're getting that drip and now I'm going to add more. So I get a bigger drip. And when I get that bigger drip, I'm earning money faster than ever at a higher rate of return. And essentially, I'm just recycling that money turning that faucet that's giving me that consistent drip into a steady stream and then eventually that steady stream turns into a flood and with that flood I can then create new drips and that is what I do one thing at a time so whether you have two or three passive income streams or seven I'm always creating additional revenue streams I don't rush the process I make sure that it's completely automated and set up properly before I leave it and to me this is one of the most obvious but most lucrative things you can do in the world of business. Next up guys, Matthew L-I-N-Y must follow if you are in fact in the XRP community. Canada, where XRP basically already has clarity. Canada sees XRP as a utility token. Remember there are three classifications, utility token, security token, and payment token, at least according to Stuart Alderati. So they classify XRP as a utility token, not as a security, according to the Canada Tax Foundation. Right here out of Vancouver, taxation of the token economy, cryptocurrency and DLT tokens. Links below, providing P2P or peer-to-peer -peer settlement for transactions with third parties on a native application platform. Native utility tokens and Ripple's included with SIA and Filecoin. Very cool. And friendly reminder from Ripple director Craig DeWitt has just emphasized that XRP, the digital asset and utility within this asset that it can provide is much bigger than just payments, guys. The XRP ledger does much, much more. You can mint, lend and create escrow accounts on the XRP ledger. Absolutely. In other news, ACI Worldwide, they are in fact a Ripple partner, and yes, they send $14 trillion on a daily basis. I highlight this group all the time with real-time payments in their initiatives, and they have Ripple on their website as well. And we can say ACI Worldwide is now announcing a collaboration with PayPal to bring digital wallet payment options to ACI's biller clients like Monroe County Water Authority. So pretty interesting. So pretty interesting. Just wanted to highlight another collaboration in the payment space that is focusing on digital wallets. You can see another 10 million XRP were on the move, a value of $12 million from an unknown wallet over to Coins PH. We also have Jed McCaleb almost done with his XRP, slowly but surely. And besides this 10 million XRP, you also see that Binance has sent 50 million XRP, over 60 million US dollars to China-based Huobi, another exchange. So tons of money is on the move as always. We also have Tom Emmer, a representative introducing and reintroducing actually the Blockchain Regulatory Certainty Act with Representative Darren Soto, one of the few representatives actually fighting for clarity for digital assets and cryptocurrencies. So the Blockchain Regulatory Certainty Act provides a safe harbor for blockchain innovators who do not control consumer funds clarifying the regulatory process. Blockchain entities that are not money transmitters should not have to register as such. They do not have customers, do not transmit money, and therefore should not have to acquire 53 licenses just to operate in the United States. No wonder innovation and all the businesses are registering in other areas in other countries because there's clear guidelines, they're saving a boatload of money, and it's just less of a headache. And this is why people are going where they're treated best. Also, we have this gentleman, the Utility Boom, just asking if there's any information or partnership or affiliation with Ripple and the company IBM back in the day. Now, IBM, kind of like Goldman Sachs, they have their hand in everybody's cookie jar. I see relationships with Quant. I see them with Moby. I see them with a bunch of groups. And even Rath Economy going on to answer, I know they've been involved with a few proof of concepts early on. We're talking years ago. And yeah, there's a few decks available or other slideshows that I've seen PowerPoints that include IBM and Ripple. So just wanted to highlight that. And also check this out. So we have Matthew L-I-N-Y confirmed RippleNet in Vietnam, zero doubt, and tagging Bank XRP, and I'll show you why in one second. So we have the Vietnam FinTech report in 2020, and we can see 2020 in Vietnam, digital banking development accelerating, blah, 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 blah. You can see a few groups here, such as RippleNet out of the United States and TP Bank with Backbase in the Netherlands, and they've all joined forces with some of these local startups. Okay. And what do we have here? TP Bank also joining Ripple, shared by Bank XRP back in 2019. And see for yourself, we have the links, we have everything available, and it goes on to say, 
From the beginning of November 2019, international money transfer via TP Bank will be faster, more convenient, and safer than before thanks to TP Bank's successful application of blockchain tech through RippleNet. Boom. We also have our buddy BitBoy, who is arguably one of the biggest YouTubers in all of crypto and all of Bitcoin who used to hate XRP. Absolutely hate it. It's all getting great, and I'm absolutely certain we're going to see more and more people jumping on the bandwagon, especially as XRP begins to shoot past $2, $5, etc. Some analysts are calling for a $3 XRP this cycle, but I think that's lame. My prediction for XRP is still holding between $10 and $12, and that's even if the SEC case is ongoing. If the case with XRP goes away, either with the SEC giving up or just giving Ripple a slap on the wrist, we could be looking at truly parabolic prices for XRP. We can see double digits per coin. Some analysts are calling for a $3 XRP this Next up, I really want to highlight this to give everybody some perspective. So yes, yeah, some assets have already done a 100x return since their March 2020 prices since that crazy crypto crash when everybody thought crypto was going to zero and the total crypto market cap was under. 200 billion dollars and today yes we're around two trillion dollars well over a 10x from where we were and i'm beyond happy i caught even a portion of some of these moves even just 5x's 10x's here and there and there's more to come there will be year over year growth in my opinion provided you are investing in utility fundamentals and of course common sense and even xrp king doggo goes on to say Imagine you got a 100x profit and then you invest it all back in XRP. And this is exactly what I aim to do. And there's been some assets that have done 50x's, 70x's, such as Cardano since last year. And I'm even measuring just the candle bodies from March 2020. We're at about 2.5 cents to the current price of $2.05. That's a 76x. If you wanted to go wick to wick from the lowest price that we were ever at for ADA to the highest price, you can actually see that it was over a 100x return. Zillica was also a 100x return. VeChain was over a 100x return, almost 200 at the all-time high price. And yeah, I do imagine that VeChain goes way higher than this in the future. And now we have other assets like DAG, DAG of Constellation Network, leading the way at a new all-time high price per candle bodies. And now I'd like to go side by side and show you something interesting with the XRP price chart and why I am very bullish. And I also think there are some massive misconceptions for people that are trying to make money way too fast. I don't make 500 trades a day. I make one or two trades every few weeks and it has been well worth it by just being patient. I have my long-term XRP I do not touch. I have my long-term cryptos that I do not touch. I have my US dollar bag is my just-in-case money, but then I also have my short-term bag. And for example, I already shared in the past videos and on my Instagram, links are in the video description. I got a 9.5x return with DAG, okay? Then I put it into another asset, got another 80% return. So essentially, that initial investment, 17x, 17x, my initial investment. While XRP was kind of going up a bit, I can use that 17x return I just got and go into XRP. So I just accumulated much more XRP than I ever would have by just dollar cost averaging and sitting on my hands doing nothing. I'm being proactive and I'm also not selling my long-term XRP. I'm using my trading bag to grow my US dollar bags to buy any future crashes, grow my long-term holdings, and then I also split it up and add it to my US dollar bag. And then I have that US dollar bag whenever crypto does a 50% crash or a 74% crash. Wick to wick, DAG crashed about 74% before going on from two cents, three cents, all the way up to 30 cents. That's another 10X right there. This is powerful. And now let me turn on the fibs and I'll show you something. But also let me show you this tweet. So July 30th, I tweeted this, that awkward moment when DAG wicks to 40 cents, hits my Fibonacci target perfectly to show you it will eventually head there later on. And it was at 23 cents then. And I know we we're kind of a little choppy since that point. But now just to go back and show you right here, this is DAG today. Now here's two Fibonacci levels. And this is something I was showing back in what, like February, really since this high, okay? I wasn't even, we didn't even have this data right here when I was going over this. I uploaded this video on YouTube, so it is public actually. That one DAG video I did, when we were at like five, six cents. And since it was under two pennies, the target has been 30, 40 cents because we are kind of gauging and showing these Fibonacci's. Anyways, using the 236 retracement as the swing high, swing low, and this is on the weekly price chart for DAG, we can see it did wick all the way to the 4618, and they're the same levels essentially, 30, 40 cents. And then of course, swing high, swing low. And what did we do? We're blasting up and in, in routes. And notice this wick hit perfectly on the 4618, one of my top extensions. 
pretty crazy. And yes, I've seen assets like Ramp. I've seen many assets wick up here to foreshadow that they are in route. Just wanted to share that. Found that to be fascinating. So, of course, showing these Fibonacci levels, can delete this one. And let's kind of take a peek at XRP as well. So, we're going to go wick to wick and take a look and see what that 4618 would be. So, that's about $3 plus. But now, let's make it the 236 is the top to see that really bullish case for XRP. And of course, that's 11 to 12 bucks. Just wanted to share as I continue to speculate that DAG and a few other assets are in fact leading the way out of this cup and handle. So I know a lot of assets are around here. Some are getting up here, challenging their all-time high price. We have Solana up here. And then of course, the assets I'm tracking are up here. So I'm watching these guys and we're going to see if XRP does in fact follow suit because this whole structure right here would be beautiful if this was actually this. And now this next little cup and handle formation right there was in fact this. This would be an insane fractal to play out because then of course xrp would in fact be blasting through the all-time high price right when things are getting interesting in september with the ripple sec lawsuit with flare networks going live cryptocurrency potentially doing a blow off top moment things are interesting and i will be watching and also just so everybody's aware and if anybody needs to hear it right now i've had my fair share of mistakes but I always get back up and I come back stronger than ever. And do not dwell on your mistakes. Do not dwell on missing a huge opportunity. Because if you keep dwelling on that, you're not going to see the next opportunities that life is presenting to you. You're going to miss the next door that is sliding right past that you could walk through and potentially change your life. So don't dwell. Focus on the good. Fail fast. Learn from it. Pick yourself up. The next opportunity that could actually come your way could be life changing. And when we crashed recently, instead of dwelling too much, I actually was just looking at the next opportunities. I got slapped in the face and said, okay, I learned my lesson, but how am I going to get out of this and improve upon this? So of course, anybody that's been taking advantage of buying low and dollar cost averaging when everybody was in fear, we're at 60 cents last month. So you should be up almost 100% from any of those buys. And the next opportunity that could come your way could be 10 times better. So in a way, the mistakes may actually be a blessing. And it's funny because everybody's interested to buy XRP now. And long term, yeah, you're going to be fine. Nobody wants to buy there when we're in fear, bottoming out, having a double bottom, showing some support. We have the golden crosses turning. We had confirmation of other assets breaking up, but they ignore it. And they want to buy high because the herd mentality is real. They want to buy when all their friends are buying. I'll never understand people that sell low, sell down here, and then want to buy back here. You keep doing that. You're going to do the opposite of compounding your returns. You're going to wipe away your returns overnight. And even with DAG, I can't time the top or sell it the top perfectly at all. I'm excited to run nodes, earn more DAG. And if this baby just keeps going to a dollar, a few dollars, oh my gosh, the returns are going to be exponential. However, I had to take profit. I had to get my initial investments out. I had to de-risk. And I de-risked, as I shared on Patreon, at like 14.2. Um, but it was like over here because it went higher, I think. But um, I de-risked at like 14.2, something like that. And what, what do you know? If I just held on, I would have got another 100% return. Coulda, woulda, shoulda. Instead of pouting about it, I took that money. And I'm already making moves accordingly. And long term, I'm going to be fine. So I know I was joking on Twitter saying I am amazing at taking profits with my trading bag. Of course, I have my long term holds, guys. I just have to emphasize that because I get, I get comments in every video. Wait, you sold all your crypto? No. But I'm amazing at taking profits with my trading bag, only to watch the asset continue to pump. But that's exactly why I hold a portion for the long term, to hedge my risk. If we crash, oh, maybe I can buy back and double down. It's not about being right. It's about being able to make money in either situation. And of course, one situation would be better. But I'm really trying to hedge my risk and make the odds in my favor. And that's all investing is. In DAG's use case, we haven't even scratched the surface yet. Covering data, big data, I don't really see any competitors, at least not yet. And this can scale infinitely and has no fees, virtually no fees. It's more efficient than HBAR, Hedera Hashgraph. And everybody that loves HBAR, I love it, I hold it. I was one of the first people to buy HBAR when it was live on its first exchange. But I'm still watching other assets that have smaller market caps and potentially a much better ROI. And as HBAR has been chilling between 20 to 40 cents for a few months, I was capturing, you know, a 10x, a 20x this year in DAG. So I'm trying to hold a balance of small caps, medium caps, and then of course high caps. 
So big data, DAG, but XRP, do not get it twisted. XRP's place in the payment space, in my opinion, is basically guaranteed. Now, none of what I say in this video is financial advice, but I just hope that some of the things that I've shown you the past few years, along with all these great YouTubers and researchers, will be remembered because you have some of the highest tiered individuals in society itself that are backing XRP, the digital asset. And it's hated for a reason. You have to question that. All the assets that I buy and hold and discuss, it's not to fit in. It's because they have actual fundamentals and true connections that I pay attention to. And long term, they will win. I was saying this a few weeks ago, that awkward moment when 2020 was most people's worst year, but 2021 has the chance to finish off and become one of the best. Keep the faith, stay strong, and make a plan. And the smartest people buy before the breakout, buy before the pump. If you're a long-term holder, act like it. The herd mentality is a real thing. Nobody wants to buy a well-established asset when the price is low. Nobody wants to buy down here. They'd much rather buy when the price is literally starting to run. That's For me, that's not my style. I don't want to buy during that parabolic move when volume, this candle is just up here shooting like crazy. I want to buy way before that. I want to buy before the golden crosses as I see confirmation. I want to see before the RSI is piercing up here. We still haven't even pierced. What do you think happens when we pierce? We can see that DAG's RSI pierced. Bullish continuation. Broke out. Do we break out and go three, four, five bucks? You tell me. These are just a few of the things that I'm watching. The smartest people buy before the breakout and then we sell the parabolic moves. Or you have long term holdings as well. But still, the smartest thing for anybody to stay sane in this market is to take some profits at some point. Because a lot of us in 2017 and 2018 witnessed buying into that move and then the assets crashing 80% and we didn't take profit. And that's not a good feeling. So everything I'm saying is just from experience. Long-term holds, fine. Short-term bag, I'm taking profit. Any crashes, I buy back and basically buy 2x or even 10x more crypto than I ever could have and I buy before the price runs. Every day is a new opportunity. Do not let it go to waste. Learn something, put yourself in a position to win, and be patient. As always with XRP, nobody cares until you're right, and then it's too late. Links are in the video description. I'll catch you in the next one.